a new day, a new project. I want to update the firmware on my TS100 soldering iron and there is an open source firmware, it's called RALIM. I had that before. The OLED LCD starts to degrade, the brightness went down, so I thought it's something related uh, in between the firmware and the OLED LCD problem, but it turns to be the LCD itself, so somehow uh, I lost my trust in this firmware. Well, I want to give a new chance and I want to load it again in my TS100. The new version of Ralim brings a lot of uh, improvement. PID style iron temperature control, automatic sleep with selectable sensibility, motion wake support, all the settings exposed in uh, another intuitive menu. For TS100 we can set the lower limit for lithium batteries so you don't kill your battery pack. Improved fonts support multiple languages. We can disable movement detection if desired. It turns the iron in an old style iron, just push on and off. Also, the boost mode lets change the temperature in a very fast way, in a short period of time. Battery charge level, if you use a lithium polymer or an external battery or something. Automatic LCD rotation and also you can have your own uh, logo when you are booting but before anything we have to download the firmware all we need over here it's micro usb cable and of course a laptop or a computer first of all we have to open a page and that's the page over here you're gonna have the link in the description and here we have the firmware like news the new firmware from uh, January 17, 2021 have fixes, uh, auto rotation, support for new acceleration, warnings and so on. All we have to do is to download this, in my case, TS100 zip, because that's the iron I have. Let's save it, open the folder and here we have TS100 hex that's the one we need copy this and I'm gonna move it into an empty folder right here and we have it okay so the next step is to have the micro USB cable connected to the laptop to the laptop there and we'll take the iron push A and have the cable on. As you see, we have this display over here, DFU 3.45. Okay, on the computer, we have a new USB storage. I'll do this, copy. I'm opening this and I'll put over here, paste. There we are, the storage device starting by itself. All we have to do now is to take off the cable and let's have a power supply. Okay, so the firmware is installed. Let's power on the soldering iron. I'm gonna use a 3S lithium polymer battery for now. And let's see how it's looking like. Oh, look there. So we have a power indicator, instructions or menus better in the middle and of course the tip over here. If we press, you see we have two buttons here, A and B. If we press A, we go straight to hitting the tip. So it starts working. If we press B, then we can choose the menu. Let's press B and we have the power source. Let's check for 3S. It have a cutoff limit and this is really nice at 10 volts you don't have to be worried about your batteries to be over discharged let's go farther power source soldering settings boost temperature that's how much the temperature will rise in the moment when we press a let's say we are working we are doing some stuffs but you feel like you need uh, higher temperature you just press a and it goes straight to 400 degrees everything is in celsius here let's go farther 
auto start zero i don't want to have that that means when you plug the power it starts hitting already okay temperature change short uh, i'm gonna use this 20 degrees and then temperature change long i'm gonna use that for let's say 50 degrees locking buttons that means when you press both of these buttons you are locking the iron so i don't want to use anything of that that's it for soldering settings slip mode so slipping temperature well i like to be lower let me have it to 100 degrees okay then slip time out 50 seconds oh that's okay that should be nice you have infos for any page of the menu this is nice then shut down time out 10 minutes okay i want it sooner i am gonna have it we can press long here and change the values i'm gonna have it on five minutes motion sensitivity that's how uh, hard you have to move the iron so the acceleration sensor it feels that you move and starts hitting it's on seven that's more than enough it's okay user interface temperature units in celsius now you can change to fahrenheit display orientation right or left and uh, you can even have it on automatic so when it's an auto if you change it it goes by itself you see very nice feature let's have it on auto next cool down blink so the um, display will flash when the temperature is going down when it's cooling in fact okay let's have this on next scrolling speed that's how fast the letter will uh, go on the menu okay let's have it faster slow fast okay next reverse keys a for plus and b for minus let it like this just let it then we have the user interface okay we've been there already next in the menu advanced options power limit this one have a 65 uh, watts so you can limit the the power to any of this until 65 of course so i just put it off detailed idle screen i really don't care about that i don't like too much information on the screen i better see the battery status tell solder screen when you are soldering when you are working with it in fact factory reset calibrate temperature input voltage so that's for uh, for this menu i think we have done here and uh, that's pretty much all now we can go to start working and you can see it's rising the temperature pretty fast and we have a clear battery indication over there this is really nice and i think that's it for now i'm waiting to see if this firmware has got something to do with that problem about the lcd brightness we'll see in time how it's working and how it's behaving thank you for now don't forget to have fun and see you soon with some other projects. Be safe. Bye-bye.